We're here in studio with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator with the NRA National Farms Museum. And Phil, you've come and given us the pleasure again of visiting us with a lot of neat things for Curator's Corner. So let's get started with this first firearm. It's called the Liberator. Tell us about it. It is. Thanks again for having us out here, John. Uh, the Liberator is a uh, very unique piece of World War II history. Uh, and it's, it's an engineering marvel as well. Uh, it's a very crude, crudely made gun, as you can see, uh, but it, it is the uh, brainchild of the uh, OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, which was the forerunner of today's CIA. CIA yeah. And uh, while Bill Donovan had a, uh, had a meeting, and uh, they sat down and got the brain trust together, and they said, what kind of things can we come up with that we need to do to help the war effort? Dirty tricks type of things. I love those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I thought, well, there are a lot of uh, partisans uh, in occupied territory. The Japanese had overrun most of Asia. Uh, the Germans had overrun most East and Western Europe. Uh, so in 1941, when we got in the war, within about 90 days, Donovan had this meeting. And they sat down and they thought, we want to get a, uh, a gun into the hands of the resistance. We want to help make the enemy hurt from both sides. And uh, what we want is uh, a gun that can uh, be used uh, basically to have a gun to get a gun program, uh, something that was almost disposable, and uh, something that if the enemy got a hold of them, wouldn't materially aid their war effort. And we also need to make it rugged uh, so that we can throw it out of an airplane, you know, onto the people below, and uh, make it uh, simple and quick and cheap. Uh, so just like you and me sitting here at this table, these guys brainstormed this idea, had those five criteria. Six months later, a million of these guns were delivered to the Army. Wow. Now, can you imagine that? <laughs> Going from zero, th nothing on paper, right. a thought, a, a note at a meeting, to full production, approval, manufacture, yeah. delivery, six months, one million units. And what we have is a, a single shot, 45 caliber pistol. Uh, it's made out of zinc, uh, stamped uh, metal. It's got a, a steel barrel, but it's smooth bore. Uh, the uh, chamber in the, uh, in the grip handle holds 10 rounds, but wow. it's not a magazine. Uh, this isn't a semi-automatic, it's a single shot. Uh, you pull the, uh, pull the hammer back here and lift up this gate, and you insert a single 45 ACP round and uh, you cock it, put it back into firing position, and uh, cross your fingers and pull the trigger. Uh, <laughs> this little wooden dowel was used to extract the, uh, the empty casing out of the chamber. And uh, the, uh, the box uh, was paraffin coated so that it could sit out in the rain and the weather. Uh, there were uh, the 10 rounds, the dowel, and a little instruction sheet that was, had no wording on it, it was just a cartoon, 10-step uh, process that had to load, fire, and, and reload the pistol. Uh, so they made a million of them. Uh, we believe they only really got to see service in, uh, in the Pacific Theater in Asia. Uh, there's a photograph of uh, a Nepalese man, you know, in the uh, Chi you know, Chinese resistance uh, that, that had one stuffed in his belt. Uh, the others, we don't think, uh, probably about half of them ended up being tossed in the ocean, you know, n wow. never having been used. But the Indians, North American Indians, had a, uh, had a uh, practice where a young brave, before he could uh, go into battle as a, f as a full brave, uh, had to participate in something called counting coup. Uh, the brave would actually engage the enemy, but he would have to touch him physically before he could engage him with arms. And uh, that's pretty much the story of this pistol. You have to establish body contact with the individual you hope to perforate with the bullet <laughs> to make sure it actually goes through that individual when you pull the trigger. I fired one of these a number of times and at uh, 10 feet, uh, the projectile is already shooting uh, six to eight inches high and it was keyholing, which means it was going sideways through the target wow. at the time it, uh, it impacted, just about 10 feet away. So uh, very interesting, uh, interesting gun. 
uh, a, a very unique piece of World War II uh, black ops. It's really great. And, and I assume that this piece, with having the box material and the dowel, makes it even more valuable. It, it does. There are, uh, there are a number of, of uh, well, there's only one variation of the pistol, uh, but there's a number of different configurations you can get one in. Uh, the pistol itself uh, can sell for as much as $2,000, $2,500, complete with the paraffin box, the dowel, and the original instruction sheet. And we've removed the instruction sheet and put it in our archives uh, for Great. safekeeping. Uh, but all complete, you're looking at $5,000, $6,000. Wow, so the value more than doubles when you have the whole package. Oh, yeah. And, and a number of guys uh, have unopened boxes. They've never touched them. And when these things pass uh, from owner to owner, they come with x-rays to guarantee that the contents are all still there. Uh, and collectors are going, wow, yeah, I'll go ahead and ruin the market right now by telling everybody that uh, uh, Frankfurt Arsenal 42 dated ammunition, brass case, FA-42, is what went in, into all of the, uh, all the liberators. So uh, I myself have been trying to find just 10 rounds of it for my own liberator. Uh, but it's, uh, it's quite a collector's piece. So if you have one that's open and you're trying to find it, so in an unopened box, you're gonna find that ammunition. Right. So you know part of the authenticity, that's what you need to look for. Exactly. Absolutely, and, and now you say there's, there's not a magazine, it's, it's just built, I guess it's built into the, into the, the firearm itself. Yeah, this is a little uh, sheet steel plate on the right. bottom. And it just slides over, and you can stack 10 rounds in there. That's so simple. Yeah, which is kind of funny because most people that have fired the gun notice that it begins to uh, show evidence of stress at about three or four shots. I think I fired mine three or five times, uh, and, and it started to look like this may not you know, get through all 10 rounds. Uh, if you fire 10 rounds out of, out of that, you're either really desperate or brave, one or the other. <laughs> so perhaps this was as much, you know, it, it's really neat and it's amazing how they got to, but maybe it was perhaps as much of, I don't want to say propaganda, but as much just a, a thing to, to help people in these liberated areas to, just to feel like they're having a chance to fight back. That and the fact that somebody out there was thinking about them. Right. You know, that they wanted to try and help them. Like I said, if the... Uh, the Wehrmacht ended up with 100,000 of these, they weren't going to right. end up you know, so ruling Europe forever uh, as a result. Uh, 100,000 Schmeisers might have done something, but not, not one of these. Right, and even the name, the Liberator. Right. I mean, you can't do better than that for a name. Absolutely, and, and something out of the, uh, out of the little uh, you know, shop at, at OSS, Wild Bill Donovan and his crew of uh, the Brain Trust there. I love it. What a, what a great era to have been uh, in the clandestine services. Absolutely. Now, Phil, where can folks see this treasure? Tell us a little bit about the National Farms Museum. We have one on display uh, at the museum, open seven days a week, uh, free admission. It's open from uh, 9.30 in the morning until 5 at night, Sunday through Friday. And Saturdays, we're open till 7. Absolutely, and get more information about it online as well, and get out to Fairfax, Virginia, and visit the National Farms Museum out there at NRA headquarters. Phil Schreier, thank you for being here for the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John, for having us today.